Can I please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call me to order. Roll call. Mayor West, you there? Yes. Frank? Yes. Bolar? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Policy and procedures manual. You got so we're here tonight to discuss a, a potential policy and procedures manual. So what what uh, the council has is actually just a a some a current policy is from the city of Hiawatha. But uh, a, a, a uh, really a comprehensive policy, you know, as far as any of the examples that I had gotten, this was this was pretty comprehensive and included um, some things that that other uh, other versions may not. But I did want to uh, get the chance to just walk through this really viewing tonight as a as a work session with the council about working through this policy and uh, not looking for, for any action on policy tonight or anything, we would uh, work through this and, and uh, then be able to formulate what would be our first draft of policy. The other thing to make sure to point out to everybody, a very obvious statement. If we look at implementing the policy, there's an expectation we follow that policy. And But seriously be thinking about that then. If there's some things that, that, uh, that we have not been uh, real restrictive on in the past, you know, and when would we look at having having policy on some things now, if there's a policy there, of course, there's an expectation that you follow it. And uh, just be thinking about that as, as we kind of walk through everything. Yes, my, my plan for the night would be to walk through this policy. You know, I've highlighted several things that, that I would like to, uh, to discuss with the council, and then just as we proceed down um, through these through these issues that uh, please be asking asking questions and bringing up comments. I do intend largely to, to walk through this uh, this entire policy and I guess expect it might take a little while. So, so everybody should please turn their mics on so everybody can hear on the camera. <laughs> Okay, just said, so as we're going through here, we'll just, uh, again, just walk through the policy and uh, please uh, stop or ask any questions on anything in particular. Okay, you see what the scope of the policy is and, and item B then talks about the rules of order. In this case, um, the generally accepted rules for procedure are Robert's rules of order. Okay, now, and in, in real rough terms, I guess, we utilize Robert's rules uh, rules of order. We have not been, uh, you know, we don't use, use all of the finer points about Robert's rules of order. I guess we, and, and never really have, you know, and there'll be some issues in here about calling the question and these type of things. And, and we haven't been that formal about a lot of things. But still, just uh, in general, the, the reference there that the procedure that the council follows is Robert's rules of order. Okay. If there's matters that aren't covered by the policy, any any matter uh, which is not covered would be decided by the presiding officer with the assistance of the city attorney. The presiding officer most likely is is the mayor, but in the mayor's absence. You see that, of course, there's the mayor pro tem who, who would set in, and then in the absence of both of those, you'll see how, uh, how a third person would be selected from the city council to uh, be the presiding officer. And then D is, is interpretation about, about how these uh, um, are to be interpreted if they're inconsistent with state with other laws, then and the other laws would supersede. Regular meeting times, and this tells uh, about their regular meeting, and in this case, theirs was first and third Wednesdays, but we would have first and third Mondays at 7.
this talks about work sessions there. The work sessions can be scheduled throughout the year as uh, determined necessary by the council and the date and time then of the work session uh, may be scheduled by motion of the council at the previous uh, meeting. We have uh, certainly have, have had times when we call uh, special meetings and it might just be that we would start to pick a date and I'd work with the mayor on, on a date and call to make sure that everybody can attend. That would be those special meetings there where it's talking about the special meetings do need to be called with 24 hours uh, notice. Okay, so the, this is saying that you call a special meeting, um, that the mayor can call a special meeting, or that a special meeting could be called upon written request of a majority of the council members. So if, if we had three council members who, who wanted to have a special meeting on, on a topic, and that would be sub submitted to me, and then a special meeting would be would be uh, scheduled. Bottom paragraph there on, on page four, where it talks about a special meeting requested by a citizen. And um, this comes up from time to time, but usually if, if it comes up, it has to do with um, immediate scheduling stuff. As in somebody wants to do something very quickly before the next council meeting, or... Um, what has come up then before would be like liquor license issues. Somebody's very late on their application for liquor license or something like that. This would allow for a special meeting that can be requested by the citizens, but the fees to cover that special meeting um, would be would be paid by the uh, by the requesting party, and that is. Um, you know, this lists them as publication costs, attorney engineer fees, council member fees, and uh, clerk costs, anything else that might be associated with that. For us, our, our fees aren't, I don't think, that, that dramatic, but there would be that uh, everybody gets paid for their attendance here, and then we would also have to publish minutes. Any, any questions or comments on that? Could, looking at your thoughts. Could, could you weigh that, uh, or that's just mandatory? Like Again, if, if we have it in the policy, it would, it would be mandatory. We've never had anything like that before, and if we've had to work with somebody on truly special circumstances, we would work with them on that. Which, man, if that's happened a handful of times over the years, at Peace Christ just didn't happen very often. So what's your thoughts about <coughs> special meetings requested by citizens, and then do they pay the fees? I think that'd be dependent on the circumstance. Well, you're going to have to... One way or the other. Yeah, you know, what's it's good for one is good for the next. It's Because it, this is just very, very few instances where we can't can accommodate that. their need through a regular council meeting. You know, it just takes a little bit of planning on their part, and, and this what this does, it can, it can occur when, when that planning hasn't occurred and they want to do something really quickly. Well, we'll just leave that there for now. Uh, closed meetings, the next section on page five. And a lot of this stuff, uh, several of these things in here are just, um, they're just recapping really what the state code says. And, and in this case, the, the issues pertaining to closed meetings uh, are just out of, out of the code. And with, with one exception there that I would, would uh, include about the closed meeting portion, we do have a policy about um, attending um, meetings electronically and whether that's video or or through the telephone that we allow folks to participate um, in open sessions then electronically we would not allow folks to participate in closed session so we would add that to this uh, this section of it about uh, that folks need to physically be present in, in the uh, in the room to participate in close. I, I do have a question on it says affirmative vote of either two thirds. That's sixty six percent. That's going to take four votes. Six four. Yeah. Um, is that pretty standard, or can you do it to sixty percent? So it's you know three. No, three, it, three of the five. If, if it's listed like that, it's going to be listed in the code. I'll, I'll confirm that, Mike, to, to know that for sure, but I'm sure that comes out of the state code. I mean, <laughs> we only have five voting members. It's to get, yeah, the, to get a affirmative vote of four, you know, it's... 
you and it yeah, I guess it'd be the same I, I, either way for yeah. but uh, uh, of course the the state codes written to have and has percentages in those cases because not all not all city councils are five right. most, most right. of them are some of them are six some I think there's some that are seven <clears throat> let me check that though okay about the agenda uh, bottom half then of page five about preparation of the agenda I guess before we get into the policy on this let me tell you how everything has has worked here um, that we we certainly put the uh, uh, agenda packet together by Thursday I want to be reviewing a, a an agenda with the mayor and then everything comes together then on Friday and we're able to get that agenda put out the fact of the matter is it happens very frequently that we will add things to the agenda even on Friday afternoon and whether that's just building permits or whether it's some other type of issues um, it when it comes time for for uh, the council meeting we certainly want to try to be responsive to to people who have who have issues to get before the council um, so in the way this reads you know they're saying their meetings are on Wednesday and the uh, the uh, uh, deadline for agenda items is the previous Thursday at noon. So um, I guess I'm not against the idea of having a a deadline, but uh, um, it just proves to be practical to uh, to be able to prepare that on on Friday, and you know if even if it said Friday at noon or Thursday at noon for for agenda items, we could certainly make that work if you know it, it, it'd be different to, to have this policy because right now I would say it's the rare occasion when we don't try to accommodate folks if if they come in to, to ask for something beyond the agenda any thoughts on that I, and I know you, you yeah, actually I like what you're doing except I wish we had a little bit more time sometimes we don't get my packet till Sunday right. And that gives us one day to review what's going on and to check it. If we could have at least the Friday and the Monday to mm -hmm. go through that. And it doesn't mean later on in here it reads that their agenda is a tentative agenda. Yeah. And where we can always add something to it, but at least what we know what we got so we can start reviewing some of that sooner. To give us more time. Got by Friday night. We don't. No. We, yeah, that's what I say. I think it yeah, has yeah. more to do with the... Uh, but if you had some type of a cutoff in there, yeah. a little bit sooner so, than what you're saying, yeah, then I, we would be sure to have them. Right, and, for and Friday. if we had them on Friday, it gives us time to it gives us two business days to do review of stuff mm -hmm. if we got to do some checking. That's the only thing I'm saying. It, a little bit more time wouldn't hurt nothing. Well, I think half the problem was that sometimes the officers don't get it out to us. Right. right. As, as soon as, I mean, yeah. I mean, if we become a little stronger with our delivery, you know. But but he's still having it not setting until Friday late afternoon. Well we could we could we could change like if we changed it to Thursday and then we could get it on Friday to give us that Friday and Monday to review stuff before the meeting. Part of that is what everyone's gotten used to already is that you're used to, you know, you're not getting them till Friday afternoon out or finished. Mm -hmm. You know, so then they think, okay, I got till this time. Well if you put an actual time living on a Thursday, let's say, by a certain time, you've got time to put everything together and still we have time to have that two days like Dale was talking about, to two extra days to kind of go through everything. Right, and if there's anybody that comes in Friday afternoon, I mean, that could be an extra sheet handed out at council. If it's, especially if it's a building or matter. Yeah, if it's like something, that. you know, that can't wait till the following council meeting. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying we need a whole week like what they have, but no, no extra no. days would be nice. So if if we would look at say for agenda items, submittal would be Thursday at noon. I'll then keep that I guess at Thursday at noon, and then with the anticipation, I'll try to get the packet done on Thursday. And well, and then if we can just get them to get them delivered to us, you know. Yeah. I know I'm not against the idea of doing packets on Thursday, then, then Friday will be Free of your time. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know.
Okay, so, so what I'm doing is just taking some notes on this thing too, and, right. and then we'll prepare uh, a different policy for, for further review. Okay, so they go through this posting and notification. Of course, we've got to have the 24 hour uh, posting. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the notion on page six about what they were talking about this tentative agenda. We always call ours um, a tentative agenda, and we'll still continue to do this. But if I get something out to you on Thursday, then uh, they can still be compliant legally compliant if we come in and have something done on Friday mm -hmm. and could could change the uh, uh, the agenda and be able to get that uh, information out to the council then okay this deal about uh, emergency matters on, on item D um, so that if issues do arise that are less than 24 hours prior to the meeting okay the, the, <coughs> Policy says it's best postponed in, until a strong case can be made for this in, emergency inclusion because that really is true. Boy, you just don't want to. You need to give that 24-hour notice on on issues unless there's really some some uh, uh, emergency issue that needs to be addressed. Out of, of all the years we've been around here, we had emergency issue I think waiting for that uh, uh, ice storm. Ice storm. Was and, and, yeah. and that might be the only time we've had a real true less than 24 hour emergency meeting. Um, One of the bigger messes we've ever had. <laughs> true. Expensive. Um, consent agenda. We use, utilize the consent agenda and I guess I would propose to continue to utilize the consent agenda. We've done it with building permits in the consent agenda or with building permits outside of the consent agenda. Any preference on what you'd like to see? Outside of the consent agenda. Okay. Um, this states public hearing time, and <coughs> public hearings are consistently seven o'clock um, on the uh, on the council date. So we always do public hearings first part of the meeting. Okay, about conduct conduct of meeting then. So the the uh, who would call the order? The mayor, the mayor, or the presiding officer calls it to, to order. So it is the mayor, or in the mayor's absence. It's the mayor pro tem, okay? Yeah, if both the mayor and the mayor pro tem are absent, the city clerk would call the call the meeting to order, and a temporary presiding officer would be chosen by the council members, okay? And I, I don't know that that's ever happened, but it certainly could. Never has. Okay, roll call. Um, <coughs> that we take roll call. Uh, who's here to determine the quorum call on uh, item C on page 7. So, uh, quorum, of course, just maintains uh, a majority of the council members, which would need to be three. Now, with that, so if you think in terms of the mayor pro tem is in the mayor's seat, okay? The mayor, mayor pro tem still has all of their... Um, responsibilities and, and obligations then for a uh, being a council member so they still retain their their ability to vote okay one specific thing we'll discuss here is about whether the chair can ever make a motion but other than that it is uh, it is that that you've retained your uh, your ability to vote so if as far as continue uh, considering a quorum you could conceivably have mayor pro tem and two council members and you would still meet quorum Uh, item D talks about uh, uh, control of discussion, and the presiding officer facilitates the discussion of the city council on agenda items in hope, hoping to promote equitable participation in accordance with these rules. Um, then E, uh, the order of consideration of the agenda. Okay. So these rules would say that the agenda comes out and everything is considered in the order as it shows up on the agenda unless the city council would ask to suspend the rules for reordering the agenda. Um, the other way really to look at this is to say the, the tentative agenda would come out. There's an expectation we follow the tentative agenda if there's some type of uh, special circumstances that the mayor could alter the agenda. 
which has happened from time to time, and it's usually a matter of convenience for the people in the crowd that mm -hmm. somebody's here in, in the crowd and they're not down until later on in the agenda, you would move them up the agenda. Any, <coughs> any thoughts on that? I think it's more convenient for the people that come here, the better off we are. So. Yeah. <coughs> So the mayor, the mayor can change the agenda order? order. Mm -hmm. One other thing I wrote down then just for uh, uh, get some feedback from the city council is about the location of where the uh, city administrator report would go. So for years we've had, we'd had that basically be the last thing on the agenda and here the past couple of months we moved it up into the uh, more towards the top of the agenda. Any uh, comments on that either way? I'm beginning to like it that way. I'm beginning to like it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you get to the end of the meeting and then you go, God, Peterson got six different <laughs> no, things no. that are still going. <laughs> gives everybody a better chance to think about stuff. Came up. Right. Okay. Sounds good to me. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So here's an item F. Is one of those deals about Robert's rules. Call for the question. So, so call for the question is a motion uh, calling for the city council to vote on whether or not to vote on the original motion. So basically, it puts a, it ceases discussion and gets you to the point where you're going to vote. Okay, it's got to be uh, seconded, and debate is not allowed on the call to for the question. And if the motion for, for the question passes, then a vote's held on the original motion. That, again, that, that's a, a procedural thing about Robert's Rules of Order. We've never really got to that point where we had half the council going, I want to debate things more, and the other half going, I'm ready to vote. You know, I, um, but that's the, I think, where this could come into play. Any thoughts on that? The more debate, the better. But get the chance to say what they're going to say. <clears throat> so once there's a motion, we can't debate it anymore. Is that what's this? And the second did. So that's just on the motion. That's just on the call for the question. Right. There's no debate on the call for the question. Now. And we've never done this, you know, as far as, as ever. Having a formal vote on the call to question, it just brings debate to an end, is what that does. It's just the call for the question brings it into debate. Yep. It, yeah. And anyone on the council could do that. Yeah, you got to have a motion and a, and a second, then it's got to pass by two thirds. This is, again, this is one of those Robert's Rules of, of Order thing um, where we've, we've never really gotten into it too much. If, and you can certainly leave this thing in there and it may never be used. When it, when it comes time, you know, and then the mayor uh, feels that discussion has obviously kind of run its course, he's going to ask for somebody for a motion and it would likely proceed. Yes or no? Okay, well, we might have some more discussion on that one. And then uh, G talks about discussion. Again, this thing is, is predicated on Robert's Rules of Order, where it says the city council member may speak after being recognized by the presiding officer. And again, we have not historically done that. But uh, a lot of the rest of it still is good, that a, a council member um, shall not be interrupted except by the presiding officer even in uh, in the event that it's necessary to these to enforce these rules, that's a, that is the time when council members would be interrupted. So that really just each of the council members has a chance to uh, express their opinion uh, about the issue and do so uninterrupted. But I, I guess I would propose that we strike out the thing about being recognized by the presiding officer. G. G. Yeah. No. We've never done that. H talks about limiting uh, remarks then so that each council member would limit his or her remarks to a reasonable length 
and city council. I uh, and limit and limit remarks to that purpose. So reasonable it just talks about reasonable length and limiting the remarks to that to that purpose. I talks about the presiding officer's right to enter into uh, the discussion, and this uh, policy would say that the mayor or the presiding officer may enter into any discussion. And then Jay talks about closing debate. So this would would be, uh, I think, historically how we would do things: that the presiding officer has the the uh, right to close debate, and in, in, in this case about how we've always done things, John's just basically asking somebody got a motion to make, and, and then we would uh, make that motion and move on. Okay. Now this works the other way around, though, too. If somebody says, nope, I, wanna, I want to make sure that we can continue debate, you'd, you'd need a motion and a second, and, and the, the motion to continue debate has to pass by two-thirds. Okay, votes necessary for passage. Again, these are are uh, um, really just uh, right out of the out of the city code. It takes three votes, or the state code it takes three votes for to pass a policy matter, and that has become important in the past. I think one time when we had three council members here, and we had an issue that passed two to one. Okay, that likely should not have passed. Okay, you got to have three votes to, to uh, three affirmative votes to pass something. Mayoral voting rights. Mayor is not a member of the city council and may not vote. Mayor pro tem retains all the powers of the city council. And uh, this deal about, about vetoing, again, this is just uh, uh, basically right out of the state and city code that uh, stipulates the 14 days that the, uh, the mayor could exercise a veto. The city council has the, the right to, to override that veto, and that takes a two-thirds vote. So you have two-thirds vote of the city council, um, and that needs to be done within 30 days of the veto. Uh, N talks about use of electronic devices during meetings. So this is not participating over the phone or Zoom. This is about using uh, electronic devices. And it's just a, a reminder about communicating between uh, the mayor and other council members during the meeting, as in texting each other, that type of stuff. This is, Don't we uh, have that in ours now? Yeah, I'm not sure that we do. But I, thought we did, but I could be wrong. But this is just a, a restatement, really, again, about, about open meetings law. That um, if things are happening during the, the course of a city council meeting, they certainly are protect, uh, potentially public. Okay. We'll talk about, about O here in one second, but just on P about adjournment. Uh, and they, they have that no city council uh, meetings should go past 9.30 unless two-thirds of the, of the folks decide they want it to. Remember, they start at 5.30. Uh, this whole section about uh, about adjournment, I guess we've never done anything like that. We've never had to adjourn the meeting uh, with items still left on the uh, on, on the agenda. So, your thoughts on that? or Would yeah, it be yeah. okay if we would just disregard that? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, next section I want to incorporate O above that then too about citizen participation to where um, this is talking about citizens rights to address the city council okay and then the one above it also has addressing the city council after a motion is made okay so and that above it there in O when a motion is pending before the city council no person other than a city council member shall address the city council Okay, so that, that's how this is written about uh, addressing the council after a motion is made. But citizen participation in general is, is uh, covered there at the bottom. So that citizens are permitted to uh, address the city council, certainly during our public forum time. They can ad address the council on matters that are not on the agenda then. And they can certainly uh, address the city council during public, uh, public hearing portions of the agenda. 
And this just says, at other times, as determined by the mayor or city council. Um, when you look at, at our agenda, as far as the way that it's, that it's been prepared and, and has been for, for years, where it has the notice to the public on the bottom, that the public is, is welcome to it. attend the meetings, and the mayor and council welcome comments from the general public during discussion on agenda items. <laughs> And for those attending you, if you want to comment, you just uh, raise your hand to be recognized the mayor and step up and state your name and address for the record. So uh, that's what, what we have had as far as our policy. And this is, uh, is consistent with that too, just that under item A we may want to add specifically that we do allow uh, discussion under um, agenda items. So B sets forth the man the manner about how you would address the city council. So again, you just uh, you want to address the city council. You step up to the to the podium and state your name, and then uh, speak clearly into the microphone and direct comments to the mayor and city council. And no, that is one thing that we hear about from time to time about audience interaction. That some of the interaction becomes interaction between audience members. And that, uh, that can be a concern, and this is one way to just assure that all of the interaction in between, the, uh, uh, between the public and the uh, mayor and council. Uh, item C talks about time limits on citizens' remarks, and this would have uh, a time limit of three minutes. Um, Generally, you know, you look at that and you go three minutes, that's, a, that's maybe not a lot. But if you ever have to talk for three minutes, three minutes is a long time. I guess uh, I, I would throw that out to the council about what your thoughts are about about a time limit. And is three minutes the, 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 right, um, the right amount of time? And uh, the last sentence there under that too, the total citizen input on a subject under council consideration may be limited to a fixed period by the presiding officer. So if, if it would be that um, we're, we're going to have a, uh, a, a discussion, in, including the public in this discussion, and you know that there's going to be a lot of input, and you might say, we're going to take some input on this, and we will have input here for the next 20 minutes, you know, or whatever that, that might be. And mm -hmm. per the policy, that would be allowed then from the mayor. I'm sitting there thinking three minutes would be enough just for the fact that if they all they'll have three minutes that they'll, they'll stay on track instead of, you know, having a discussion with somebody else in the, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's, we can see how that works and see how, that's my opinion, is trying to, you want to keep it going too, and, and if you don't have a cutoff, sometimes it can get a little long, and, sure. and the same thing gets repeated over and over, so. Correct. Okay, uh, D then, talking about remarks of the citizens to be germane, so we keep it on topic about the, the citizens uh, are really addressing the, the item under consideration. So the presiding officer would rule on the germaneness of, of citizen comments. So we'd rely on, on the mayor especially to uh, keep folks on task, you know, as far as the issue that's, that's being addressed and, and not straying too far too far off of that. And uh, item D, excuse me, E, talks about decorum. <coughs> okay, you see that lengthy policy there but basically saying that no person shall disrupt the orderly conduct of the city council meeting and then goes on to list some prohibited behaviors like uh, shouting or making disruptive noises or creating uh, for, or participating in a physical disturbance and so on. Yeah. And so, and really, this is this is applying to to members of the of the council and the mayor, then as well as members of the of the public about observing decorum while we're in session. And so, uh, two is talking about. While the, the council is in session, the members must preserve the, uh, the order and decorum. 
and then list these things which would be sufficient for the mayor to potentially remove somebody from the from the council chambers, which I don't think has ever happened, and I just hope that, that it never would, but it's good to have policy about at what point um, does anything get to be uh, so severe that some action would need to be taken. Unreasonably loud or disruptive language or noise or conduct which obstructs the work of conducting uh, the business of the City Council. Willful, willful injury of furnishings or of the interior of the Council Chambers or the Meeting Hall. And reviews, refusal to obey an order from the presiding officer or an order approved by the majority of the City Council members. Okay? Before anybody is, is, uh, is removed that, that they would be given a warning. And potentially item four there says that the, the mayor or a majority of the city council members could, could direct that the meeting hall be cleared. Again, um, a lot of these things can, all of these things can just be avoided with, with good decorum. And, and I don't think that we have a big problem with that. All right, uh, then you get to section six about city council action. City Council consideration of business. Again, these things are taken right out of the uh, out of the state code about open meetings law. Okay, all actions requiring a vote shall be moved and seconded by members of the City Council. Okay, and item C has uh, uh, come up here a couple times here recently about motion to reconsider. And a motion to reconsider a private vote shall be made by a City Council member who is on the prevailing side in the original action. There's some question about when this can occur, whether it's in the same meeting, whether it's in future meetings. This stipulates that the motion to reconsider may be made at the same meeting or at either of the next two regularly scheduled meetings. Any input on that? So that doesn't have to show up on the agenda? You know, if we have an issue? If it so the I guess the idea is if you've been in been in the meeting and you've debated this topic and you've taken a, a vote on it and and you have made a decision on that issue and whether there's still some continued discussion or whatever it might be and and something has occurred to change somebody's mind somebody be, on on the that, winning on side the can winning we consider side, that would, would that example be like just the last meeting with the fence deal. If if a vote had been taken already, but we hadn't yeah. taken a but we had, in that case we had not taken a vote. But uh, but yeah, been on the Vernon voted and passed the second reading of that ordinance. Yeah, right. and you could have said, yeah. there's some new information here. We would like to reconsider. That. that isn't the way it was done, right? I thought we had a motion, and then we read the first ordinance or first reading. And then when we went to do the second reading, we realized that the, some of the language, and we didn't pass the second reading. That's true. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't official. It really that, wasn't right, reconsidered. Right. It right. Well, it hasn't been passed. But, but it was, I mean, we could have done it on the Vernon's vote that we did. Mm -hmm. We did do it. Yeah, we it, did it, do it came it. back yeah. up a second time on that, yeah. and, uh, <clears throat> and Hanson Street had come right. up a second time also. Okay. All right, D, uh, D talks about no motions by the presiding officer. Okay, so the, in that case, if it's the mayor pro tem or a city council member um, who would be sitting in the chair, uh, that there would be no motion by that presiding officer. Right, so the mayor pro tem can still cast a vote. You can cast a chair, vote, you just couldn't make a motion. But he can't make a motion. Okay. Call for the vote. Um, again, any time during the debate, the, uh, the presiding officer could call for the vote, or two-thirds of the council members may call for a vote at the same time, so that's calling the question. Where it says separate consideration, that is that each agenda item gets their separate uh, consideration and would have, uh, have votes on each one of those uh, agenda items separately, and we're generally really good about that, but we go we got to pay a bill and a reimbursement of that bill at the same time we've incorporated those together before. You know, and, and by rights this would say those need separate consideration. 
Item G talks about uh, passing special assessments. Takes two thirds vote to uh, to special special assessments, or if uh, owners of 75 percent of the assessments have filed a remonstrance, then it actually takes a unanimous five to five council vote to pass assessments. And we really have not done a at least not a contentious special assessment project here before. You know, even that Sunset Drive one was driv really driven by the residents. Although not everybody was in favor of it, but it was it was really driven by the residents. H talks about uh, uh, suspending suspending rules and, and getting ordinances in place with just that one reading that 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 is allowed. Although this was was interesting because we had not done that, that the council may may we may waive the second third readings if public notice was given of that matter. So if we, you may see this on, on our agenda now that uh, uh, it may say something to the effect of just as a standard listing, it might always give the the uh, ordinance number and, and the title and then say with possible passage or something like that. So it doesn't, it doesn't commit anybody to doing anything, but if that's not on the agenda, we wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, and then this I also thought was, was really interesting about how they addressed council members abstaining. So it's, it's I there at the bottom of the page. So abstentions that are not due to a conflict of interest. Okay, so there's going to be two, two separate things here. If there's a conflict, you're going to end up declaring a conflict and you wouldn't participate. If you would intend to abstain, uh, but it's not due to a conflict of interest. This says that that you can uh, you can abstain, but cast a vote or abstain. Uh, this says cast a pass vote. That you just say, oh, I'm going to pass, or you abstain from voting. That vote's registered as a no vote. Interested in your thoughts on that? Does that talk later about <clears throat> if you have a conflict of interest and you declare it? Then you can preside to talk to the council and go from the floor. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole section coming up on that. Yeah. This is just, um, you know, what this does is it says uh, it would allow a city council member still to abstain. You know, and, you, and I, your vote, I think, is uh, it may very well be recorded somehow in the minutes that you chose to abstain. When it comes to counting the votes, your votes are counted as a no. So if we had one member abstain and two yes, two no, then we would be able Then it goes as a no. Because it just wouldn't be a big issue. True. Yeah. Just the big thing about this is that if you're, if a council member would choose to abstain just because, um, that you're, you, in essence, are still making a vote, but it's a no vote. And uh, it's... An incentive to to cast a vote either way, you know, as opposed to abstain. But knowing that when you abstain because of a conflict, it's completely different. A couple well, other provisions on. Well, that's not due to a conflict. Yeah, that was not. Okay. Yeah. So on page eleven, a couple other provisions there. Interaction with litigants, and so this would specifically lay it out that the mayor and city council would not discuss city managers involved in any pending or active lawsuits with litigants or the litigants representative, their attorney, unless the city is attorney, attorney is present to provide guidance. And I, I just I would I just would hope that we would do this anyway. You know you know that we're in a in in a, a legal issue with somebody that we would not have um, city council members talking individually with uh, anybody from the from the other side. This would have policy then that says the city attorney needs to be present. And B then talks about electronic meeting and attendance. Okay, and we have policy on this that we would replace this section on that to allow allow the policy. Um, it's interesting policy there that at least two thirds of the entire council in, in Hiawatha needs to be physically present at the meeting. 
and we've we've had several times. I think we've done it once where we've had two people present and other folks mm -hmm. called in. You know, um, and so long as everybody is, is okay with that, you know, we can be legal in the way that that's done, and we can do things electronically. Um, and of course, during COVID, you know, everybody was on Zoom and things were done that way. Okay, there are provisions here that uh, allow the uh, amendment of these rules and uh, just that re uh, the amendment would be done by resolution through a majority of the council. So when you think about the, the rules, the procedural rules of the, of the city council, okay, um, we would have discussed the procedural rules side of things. The other half of this policy is more about code of ethics for um, for the mayor, council, and staff to uh, to abide by code of, of ethics, with the understanding that all the citizens and businesses are entitled to have a fair, ethical, and accountable local government, and then it would proceed to uh, to identify several of these things about a, of course, acting in the public interest, and b, complying with the law. Those would be specifically uh, laid out there. C talks about the conduct of members being professional. And, uh, and personal conduct of public officials must be above reproach. And D talks about respect for the process, and I know we, we talk about that a lot, that there's always a process to, to everything, and I know that, that sometimes it gets frustrating about uh, how long these processes can take sometimes, but, but they are there for a reason. And like I told the mayor, you know, it takes so long because we're spending other people's money. but. Uh, uh, but it also is that it allows for the for the process to play out and have the uh, appropriate amount of interaction with with folks. Conduct of, of, of public meetings that the public officials would prepare themselves for these issues and they listen courte courteously and attentively to the discussion. And then item F talks about conflict of interest. So this is the uh, the area where you would truly have a conflict. A legal conflict, and you would uh, uh, assert that up front. So, conflict of, of interest would be in which you have a material financial interest, or where they have an organizational responsibility or a personal relationship, which may give the appearance of a conflict of interest. You know, the the one that is a just an absolute for sure conflict of interest is, is when there is something to which you or your immediate family would have some financial impact with. You know, if, if that ever would occur with uh, through the code, that certainly is a, is a conflict of interest. So what happens then is that the, the person, the council member who has a conflict of interest needs to state that up front. That you would state that I'm going to have a conflict of interest on, on this issue and you remove yourself from the issue. This actually says that you remove yourself from the from the council table, and uh, and you don't participate in discussion as a as a council member. If you uh, if you would like to address the council, you as a council member would actually address the council from the floor about a, a person who may have a conflict. Okay, so. If you abstain due to conflict of interest, these do not count as votes. These, those are recorded as an abstention. Thoughts on that? Quarter's <laughs> mine. Right. Gifts and gifts and favors. Just uh, you know, Iowa has, still has our gift law in the books about what you what you can accept. Uh, for gifts from anybody who may be a potential uh, uh, have interaction with the city, whether that be a vendor or anything else, it's technically still two dollars and ninety nine cents. <laughs> yep. Uh, confidential information, asking of course everybody to respect the confidentiality of, of that information that's that's being presented to you. Use of, of public resources that public. Officials would not use public resources that are not available to the public. So, in that, uh, that would be a uh, 
a policy then of the, of the mayor and council, but that also applies to other uh, public officials, including employees. Okay, representation of private interests. So again, this is a code of ethics statement, but so you'd be keeping with your role as stewards of the public interest, so public officials would not appear on behalf of your personal private interest or of interests of third party before the city council. Before the city council, and then also says, or any board or commission uh, of the city. Okay, he talks about advocacy, that, that uh, public officials shall represent the official policies and positions of the city council if they are at a specific function representing the city. Okay, now, if, if you are, uh, um, you're out there just interacting with, with people on, on your own and the, you know that you're, these are your own personal comments, of course that's, that's uh, um, just your personal opinion or you're going to say what, whatever it is that you would. But if you're representing, officially representing the city in some regard, this policy would have you uh, represent the official policies and, and position of the city. And then L goes through policy roles. And I think it's an important statement about policy roles that, you know, basically what, it, what it's going to say here is that the uh, uh, city council is the policy making uh, arm of, of the city, and the city council does the policy making, but the city council does not take an active role in day to day operations or administration of the city. And the city administrator responsible for the uh, to the city council for the administration of uh, city affairs all departmental activities requiring attention of the city council brought to the city administrator and all city council involvement uh, is initiated by the council must come through the city administrator your thoughts on that Okay, um, just uh, M, M is, a, I think, an important statement, again, about the value of the, the uh, independent advice that's received from our boards and commissions. And, and the remainder of the policy says then that you would not use your position to unduly influence the deliberation of these boards. And uh, positive workplace environment there on, on N as far as supporting that. And you get to... Uh, o and P are the implementation of this code of ethics uh, portion, and you know, just the main part about implementation is that this is intended to be self-enforcing. So becomes uh, effective when the public officials are thoroughly familiar with it and embrace the provisions that really you, you do um, buy into this notion about, about everything here pertaining to the code of ethics. Okay. Item P then talks about uh, compliance and enforcement. Second paragraph down, public officials that intentionally and repeatedly do not follow the proper ethical standards may, may be remanded or formally censured by the city council. So again, this is, it's not a, uh, there, there are no violation or fine or anything that goes along with this it's self-enforcing itself it's enforced by the uh, by the city council members and it's enforced by the mayor really two things when we get down to the mayor's responsibility on these things what the the mayor uh, if he would identify a, a particular problem the mayor is either going to have the responsibility uh, about discussing and counseling that individual on the violation or the mayor could recommend a censure to the city council. But the, uh, you know, of course, uh, <laughs> we've never done anything in that regards in, in, as far as a censure or anything like that either. But this lays out, I guess, an option if, if we would have members who, who choose not to, uh, to adhere to the code of ethics. Now, 
again, so if we if we would have would have this code of ethics there, there certainly is an expectation that we would would follow it. Have we had problems before? Not necessarily, and I guess this is a way to assure that that they don't come out. Your thoughts on that? So you want in writing that if something does happen, that we've got to. Yeah, it is. So it, it would end up uh, end up in writing. So, so that if, if a city council member has, has an issue with, uh, uh, with other city council members that the provisions are there about, about what would happen if it goes in writing and then the mayor does do some investigation. If the issue is raised and it's against the mayor, that goes to me and the police chief to investigate and would, would proceed on from there. Page 15 really does, uh, that one paragraph or the sentence was there for a, a, a reason. It's really important too, that a violation of the code of ethics shall not be considered a basis for challenging the validity of the city council decision. So you, even if you think something was wrong with the, uh, somebody had violated code of ethics along the way, the decision would still stand. For the remainder of that of that packet, I included the uh, the section pertaining to the to the mayor, to the mayor pro tem, and to the uh, to the city council members, as well as the city's policy on on electronic attendance at meetings. Is there anything that we did not go through that you thought we probably should have? Well, there's one thing that I think that at some point in time we should discuss and it's section 15.04. Salary of the mayor is not near equitable enough for money it Has not been changed since January 1st of 2000 in today's world. True, yep. Yeah. So the, yeah, John is paid, or the mayor is paid uh, $200 a month and uh, $25 then for, for each council meeting. Um, just whether, whether you look at, at changing compensation for the mayor or any of the city council members, what you do is you, you basically you would change this, say, now or soon, and it only goes into effect after the next uh, regular election. Right. So you can't vote yourself in a, a race. You know, you're voting for whomever the next city council members or, or mayor might be, whoever wins the next election. So, yeah, if that's something that... Uh, that's just my opinion that I want to bring to the rest of the council. After reading this stuff, I didn't... I'm not worried about the 25 for the council members, but I'm worried about the 200 for the mayor. The mayor and when it goes into effect. Two, two fifty, another fifty, two hundred bucks. I don't know. What's the number? What number are you thinking? I was thinking of getting closer to five hundred. Okay. But that's just my opinion. And I'm just bringing it up for discussion. Give it some thought. We got till yeah. we got plenty of time. Yeah. yeah. But that's just one thing. Reading through this that I noticed, I was like, you know, still gonna give me a ride home with for saying yep. three hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I just <laughs> need a little less money. <laughs> that's the only other thing that I've noticed, and a lot of the stuff that Scott brought up or get out is exactly what I had wrote down and going through that. So. Well, there ain't a whole lot of changes that we have been doing. So. Yeah, you know, really, there's there's not. I mean, there's yeah. writing a few things down that we've kind of been doing and never had policy on, and and there's probably a few things that are different. But uh, so, what's the next step? Are you going to make these corrections? Yeah, what I would are, what I would do is. Just put this in the paper and then have us go, go over again the changes. Is that what you're thinking? Or? That it's it's just a uh, just an issue to come back before the city council. Okay, so I would prepare what would be the 
the draft policy of, of the city of Lakeview then, and and present it to the to the city council. There certainly is time for uh, changes and amendments yet, if you'd like. Otherwise, it it'll show up um, when it's done. It'll show up on the agenda with a resolution to approve it. But you can. Um, we can still make changes uh, if need be. Can I have a, can I have a question? Can I have a question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I just have two questions. One, because I think over the years there's been conflicts of interest um, that weren't, not by just one person, but that weren't acknowledged by that person. So what do you do if they don't acknowledge that it's a conflict of interest? Plus, when I was on the council, I was told, and I don't remember reading it in any training material, and there was a lot of that, that I thought it had to be monetary. But you're saying it doesn't have to be monetary. And the, that's still, that is still my, my opinion based on code. Is, is that is Iowa that code? It's, that a, but even, a real true conflict is, is financial. But even so, we've had financial where people voted that affected them financially. So if the person doesn't declare that, maybe doesn't even think about it. Okay. Sure. What is the rep? What is? I mean, who who holds that up? Is that the mayor's job? Is that your job? Whose job would that be anyway? Well, yeah, it's a big problem for small towns because small towns, like some of the council, the only contractors are within 50 miles. And, All right. I mean, that's what the league is. Cities has always said there's an issue with small towns that, right. because we're so small, you know. Right. I just wonder because as far I, as process to that, Mickey, I guess I haven't thought through that. You know about if a if another council member feels that there is is a conflict that I think it ought to be voiced. That uh, happened. You remember when I first came on? We had a conflict of, with a motel out there. There was a councilman that was going to vote on accepted it, and I think Ben and I and somebody else voted against it because of her. On the, oh, yeah. on the, yeah. I think there's been several instances over the past five that's years. Why we, that's why we brought it up and she backed <coughs> off because of the... So you're saying it has to be brought up during that meeting? Well, I think I think that's got to be a... That's yeah, I guess be just that if nobody ever brings brings that up as a potential conflict, you may not even know it exists. So, I mean, yeah, somebody would need to bring that up as an issue. So my other question is, what was the purpose of this? I mean, didn't we already have practically all of this? Is it just a few, it, what was the reason for this? We do not have policy, you know, and, and it's very mm -hmm. common, I think, for, it, for cities of any size that they would have a, a council procedures manual. Well, didn't we just go by Iowa Code? Yeah. And... <clears throat> Half or two thirds of the stuff we just went through is Iowa Code stuff. Yeah. It just puts it all in one, in one location. But there are some some local policy decisions to be made then too. I see. At least it not have been writing. I see. What made you decide to do it? Somebody brought it up. Oh, About it up. Yeah. just adding adding structure to yeah. be able to have right, some better. some of these decisions with at least some rationale behind them. One of the reasons I got off plan and zoning was because of the input from the audience and the lack of control of what they said. And two of those members here on the city council were the most vocal at that time. So I just, um, I think this is a good idea. I back this 100%, but uh, it doesn't resolve all the hurt that went on during my tenure on the plan and zoning, and I'm sure Vicky's. You know, I just want to point that out. I think it's uh, overdue. It's hot in the kitchen. Yeah, mm -hmm. and those uh, that probably brought this up are the ones that don't like the fire right now. I think that as council members, you know, we're, we're saying what we expect from the audience, let's say. But it's a two-way street as far as respect of each other's views. It's down to And that, yes. it really needs to be monitored that way. <laughs> Sometimes well, I, it gets out of hand, not just in the audience. It's a good reminder but, for everybody because I know that we had a council member a few years ago that during a, pub, during a public person up there speaking, 
they're not paying attention, not giving that person any respectful eye contact at all. They're looking, or they were talking to the person next to them. It's just the way it appears, you know, and we're all, none of us are perfect, you know. I'm, I'm sure I've done that too, but it just is something to kind of keep in mind. I'll try to do a better job. One of the things I can remember in Vicky's meet, in Vicky's time on the city council, is watching a meeting where um, Mike got up in front and told that he went around and looked at every one of her houses and announced which ones are going to move, map, uh, meet up to the new um, uh, guidelines we're setting up and planning and zoning and proceeded to stomp out and slam the door. And, you know, <coughs> this kind of behavior can be over. This can take care of this kind of behavior. More people will be more than willing to serve on these positions. But I couldn't wait to get off that planning and zoning. I don't think I'm thin-skinned, but I just don't get paid enough to put up with that crap anymore. That's my input. Well, we're going to try to fix some of that as we can. Thank you. I will prepare a draft, and it will be... I would anticipate on Monday with it. So do we have to, uh, when you have this draft done, is this something we vote on once or do we go through it and then vote on it or how, how what kind of procedure do we have or do we have a chance to look it over? How quick do we want to? You, you, you want to bring can, it on Monday? Is that what you can do what, what you would like. It would, well, I guess my intention would be that I'd have a draft ready ready to go on Monday. As far as any public hearing requirements, anything like that, there is none. Okay. And then what we need to decide is what we're doing about the uh, mayor's. Will this be posted in the newspaper, so to speak? Before that, it's all turned it in approved? We got time. Yeah, that's, that, that would actually you could just add be, that a, in after. That'll be a separate ordinance yeah. at some okay. point. Yeah. The next guy on it. <laughs> is that the end of our work study? I'm, I'm done. Anybody have any questions? Motion to adjourn. I'll Motion. make it. Second? Second. Being adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Well, I need to keep this. I need to keep this. I'll have a new one for you. Okay. Hey. If it's not, I can take care of it. It's not. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.